Hey everybody, what's up? Gary Simon here. So today we're gonna be checking out something I'm surprised I've never covered before, and that is Proto.io. Now, Proto.io is a competitor to Adobe XD and Figma and the other uh, big UI UX design apps. And it is really cool because I, I've had about a day or two to check it out and explore it. Um, pricing uh, for a freelancer is $24 a month. Uh, and it goes on up from there. Um, you could try it for free. I believe it's like a 15 day trial or something like this. This is not a sponsored video, by the way. Um, I just decided to check it out because it's in my wheelhouse. And so that's what this video is going to be. I'm just going to be creating uh, a real simple sort of project, really just experimenting with the features. I was really impressed most of all with the prototyping abilities in terms of the micro animations and all the interactions that you can actually add. It's very cool. All right, so as always, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. Before we begin, this video is sponsored by Linode. Now, as a front-end developer or a designer, you know that you need a personal portfolio. And if you use a website builder like Wix or Squarespace, they lack total customization and they lock you into using their platform. But to be a pro, you need to use the tools that the pros actually use. So level up, start building your own projects and your own portfolio on an enterprise level content management system like WordPress or Drupal. Now real web development sometimes requires knowledge of spinning up servers, managing domain names, and setting up an occasional staging environment. And there's no better or simpler way to learn the ins and outs of hosting your website than with Linode Cloud Hosting. Linode Cloud Hosting makes it as easy as possible for you to deploy a WordPress or Drupal website in seconds with the free Linode one-click app marketplace. So click on the very top link here in the YouTube description to get your free Linode account along with $20 of free hosting and all the tools that you need to build enterprise class websites. All right, so once you create your free account at proto.io and log in, you'll see this new project button right here. Um, so what we could do is just um, give it a project name. I'm gonna call mine whatever because I never prepare in advance for my uh, videos, of course, as you guys probably noticed. And project type, smartphone, tablet, web desktop, smartwatch, whatever. Um, I'm just gonna stick with smartphone and we'll use iPhone 11, I guess, just to be with the latest and maybe not the greatest, but at least the latest. And we're gonna hit create. And this is just gonna give us our canvas here, which is very familiar across all these UI UX design programs. Um, you're gonna find, for the most part, this is pretty standard uh, if you compare it against you know, the big boys like at Figma and XD, but we'll run through just a few things. So of course, if you select up here, um, the actual canvas title, it'll give you the properties. So we have the, the property inspectors. Again, this is all similar, similar to other design tools, um, background, we can change this up if we wish, whatever. Um, and then we also have libraries over here, which is pretty cool because you have basic stuff. So um, if you wanna start off by designing from scratch, you can add text, type something, and of course, you'll have the ability to change you know, the, the colors here in the inspector, the font, in the inspector rather, the font family, font style, all that stuff. I'm not gonna design anything from scratch though. Um, so as you can see, you also draw your, your project assets are down here. So if you want images and all that stuff, and even I uh, videos, I believe it'll, it'll accept, which is cool because I, you know, I know XD at least doesn't, um, support videos or anything. Um, so as we can see, we also have a AE Lottie animation. That's very cool. Um, HTML code video. Uh, so all this stuff will, will work here. Um, also we have what our, uh, UI components basically. So if you need like a, a quick nav bar, um, see what that is. Or if you need, let's see here, a toolbar, buttons. I mean, it's, it's um, just all kind of just nice predefined components that you can choose from. Toggle switches, you know, basic buttons. So that's kind of handy um, that it's built right into this. Um, and then also we have templates. And these are actually, you know, full screen UI design templates. Um, there are a lot of them. I mean, just look how many there are. So that's really cool. Um, I like that a lot. So we're gonna um, go ahead and just choose one of these. Um, where are we at? There was one that I, I, I wanted to, uh, to use just so we can experiment with it a little bit. Right here, let's take this one, Onboarding Tour 4. Now, depending on the actual uh, canvas size that you chose, you know, it may not adapt to it correctly. 
Um, and I chose, I did that on purpose because I just wanna show you how you can just real easily edit and manip manipulate things. So if we just come in here, we can see over here in our layers, this is basically a group, all right, for this template. Um, you can either click here to expand and select things individually, or you can just double click and then select something and it selects it for you. So that's rectangle one. The first thing I wanna do is just scale that up so that it covers the whole screen. And we'll go over there and then finally we'll go over here. Yay, this looks good already, right? Just a tiny little change. Now for this, we have this bar right here by default that's added by the canvas. I'm sure you can get rid of this somehow, this little drop down thing right here. I don't know how to do it. Um, if there is an option to turn it off, I don't know where you do it. It's not here. So whatever. Um, what I'm gonna do though, is just get rid of all this stuff. Um, actually, you know what? I'm gonna keep it except for, actually, no, I can't. I thought I could double click into that and then just leave this little battery icon. Screw it. We're just gonna delete it all together. All right, so now we can, um, this is actually position pretty good already inside of this area, even though it was designed for a smaller, maybe I'll, I'll just bring this down just a tad bit. All right, so what if we wanted to change a color? Um, we'll change the background here. What do I wanna use? Let's see here. All right, we'll have like a vibrant background, which means of course we need to adjust other things. We'll take these two, we'll take the color here and make it white. I wanna have a little bit more visual hierarchy and separation between these two, so I'm gonna take the font family, no, the font style and change it to bold. All right, that works. Uh, the primary color now doesn't look good, so we'll take this and we'll make it a something color, like a color that works well. Now, here's one thing that really frustrated me. Frustrated me. Not available on Windows is the the color picker. That is so frustrating. So, what I'm gonna have to do instead in these type of situations is we're gonna get this color right here and let's add it to our saved color right there. And we'll take this and then we'll choose background and we'll get that and then we'll just come out maybe slightly darker. Right there is pretty good. No border, zero. All right, um, so now we'll take this color, we will add it to our saved colors and we'll come in here to this very tiny, it's like a little bit too small in my opinion. Um, if you click on it, it's actually kind of interesting. Let me see here because it, it's not like normal behavior. Um, our inspector doesn't give us an option to really, oh, there we have. We have a, two styles, inactive and active. So this is called like a, a page controller. And if we change active to this, that'll work. And then our inactive, let's change it to the same color. Maybe we'll just go lighter. There we go. All right, so that's better. Things are looking a lot better now. Oops. I'm used to, to uh, different sh uh, keyboard shortcuts in order to move things around. Okay. All right, so now let's basically, the part, the portion of which, uh, which you're, you're designing the UI, it's all really similar and familiar to other tools out there. So how about actually adding interactions of some sort um, or animations? Uh, that's the part that I really like to see how these different apps approach adding uh, prototyping in terms of animations and inter interactions and micro interactions. And this does a pretty good job. So they deal with things I uh, hear at Proto.io as states. So we can see we have a screen state here and then we can add a new screen state right here just by clicking this button. So if I click new screen state, we have state one and now we have state two. Nothing changes because state two is just a duplicate of state one. So if we click on state two, let's change some things up. So let's say for instance, we want a swipe carousel on, on these three elements right here. Um, first, I think I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. I wanted to show like how you can import your own asset and like, you know, put it in here. So I'm gonna just simply drag in this little toy graphic I, I got from Unsplash. I'm gonna upload it there. All right, and 
what we're going to, going to do at this point is if I go to basic and just choose an image, just like put it here, and then we could double click it to go to account assets and toy, select the asset. Now it has this very large asset. We'll scale this thing down a lot. Now, unfortunately, like in Adobe XD, for instance, if you select a shape and then you drag it from the desktop and th drag like a photograph into it, it'll automatically place it in there. I couldn't get that to work, so I don't think that's a thing that will work in Proto.io. But what you can do is add masks. So in the when you select your photograph and you choose mask and crop, it's automatically going to give you this uh, mask right here, which you can either do um, like a, an actual rectangle, a rounded rectangle, like this, or if you go all the way up, it'll give you like a a circle. Unfortunately, I don't think you can do custom masks. Now, somebody correct me if I'm wrong because I haven't been using this quite long enough to really know. So we're just going to basically recreate this little container right here. Um, so you can move the mask around, but you can also move the image as well, which works pretty intuitively. We'll just go like right there. So if I come out over here and maybe a little bit larger on those corners, that looks good to me. So what we probably want to do, I'm going to copy this, delete it, go to screen one, paste it. I'm going to go to screen or state two, right click and delete it. There we go. And now we'll duplicate it by clicking new screen state because I did modify it. Um, <laughs> I'm so stupid though. I forgot to delete this. We don't need that. So now I'll just go back to state two and do the same thing. Make sure they're matched up. All right. So now they are pretty much matched up exactly the same. So what we'll do is we'll take this and we'll take this one first because this is going to move out of the way. Then we'll take this, move it over here and scale it down slightly. All right, then we'll take this one and we'll move it over to the middle. It's not if I hit shift, it makes it for some reason it's making it follow this baseline. That's kind of annoying. Uh, maybe I could just take our X. There we go. And then we'll also scale it up. We'll make sure it scales both. Yeah, it's something like that should work. All right. So now we have two different states. So if we go to uh, make sure we have uh, state one selected, if we choose this, it's kind of hard to see because the background's blue and this little icon right here itself is blue, but there is an icon there. Um, you can see it right here in this case. What we could do is just drag it to state two. So create a transition between state one and state two. We're going to hit yes, create. Okay. So now automatically we see this uh, this timeline with these keyframes and such here. So what we can do now is for this uh, interaction, we click on it. We want the trigger type. Now look at all these different types here. This is very cool. Adobe XD, for instance, only has a few. This has a lot more. We want to swipe left. So you can give it a delay. Uh, callback which is executed after the action is complete. I haven't personally messed with this. That looks sort of cool, uh, but I'm not going to do that. Um, so we come back here. It didn't save my changes. Swipe left. We're going to save the interaction. So now if we hit preview and I swipe left, there we go. Look at that. Everything just works. Now if I try to swipe right, it doesn't work. So let's make that one work. So all you have to do is go to state two. Are we at state two? I want to make sure we're at, no, we're not. At, there we go. Now we're at state two. We double click in here and we want this to go back here to state one. Create, click on it. It's swipe right this time and save interaction. So now let's go ahead and hit preview.
look at that. It just works as it's supposed to. I know it's not exactly consistent in terms of like the height of this one. This one's a little bit smaller, but nonetheless, hopefully you get the idea. Um, let's check out a couple other things here. So let's go back. Um, you can add multiple interactions, of course, on the same element. Let's say, for instance, we click on this, we go here, we can add an inter interaction this way as well. So we can click new interaction and the trigger can be a tap or let's, what else can it be? Click, right click, mouse over, mouse out. Most common would be maybe a, oh, let's just try a mouse over. So the action, what's the action? So you can do a lot of different things for the actions. Uh, go to screen, show item, hide item, animate item, change a property, change screen state, change the container state. Um, there is a lot here. This is really cool. I haven't gone through all of them, that's for sure, but you can make a play a video. You can restart a GIF item. You can play a Lottie animation. I'm, send SMS. Look at that. That's amazing. I'm just finding this out for the first time, by the way. Um, let's just do animate item. All right, so what are we animating? Screen one? Okay, I guess we'll animate screen one item. Um, right now we have image two selected. So if we hover over image two, we'll animate that, I guess. Animation type. We can move item, resize, fade, or scale. Um, I don't know. Let's do a fade item. Fade two. Just do like 0.6. Duration delay, we'll let that all go. Save interaction. So now if we hit preview, look at that. Now here's the thing. If I go and hover over this again, is it gonna make it even darker? No, it keeps it. Okay, that's good. So what if we wanted to go back? Well, last thing we'll show is just we can can I duplicate? Yes, I can. I can duplicate an interaction. So all we have to do now, mouse out, and we'll fade to one. Save the interaction, hit preview. Look at that. So this is really cool, and I really love the prototyping ability of this uh, software so far. All right, so what do you guys think about that? Is that something, a piece of software you guys would want me to create more tutorials for in the future? I think certainly that there's definitely uh, some justification to do so simply because there's a lot of really cool different interaction types and a lot of different things to play around with to see how just how good it is. So as always, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you soon. Goodbye. Yay!